Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, and uh, Rob, you said everything, so uh, let's just jump into the agenda for today. Uh, first, I'm going to do a very brief uh, intro to the Rome Mobile Database uh, for people who are unfamiliar with that. We did another guest lecture uh, a few months ago uh, that's more detailed, uh, but I'll just uh, go over the high-level overview today as well. Uh, then I'll show how you can get started with the Rome Mobile Platform, and we'll have two de demos. Uh, first, we'll deploy the Realm Mobile Platform on Azure. And then uh, we use that deployment to implement a very simple messaging application. And let's get with it. Uh, the Realm Mobile Database uh, is on-device cross-platform object database that was launched for Cocoa and Java uh, in 2014. Uh, it's completely open source. We have a C++ core and uh, bindings for the most popular languages out there, uh, mobile languages, that is. Uh, and for the Xamarin people, we have uh, support for Xamarin uh, native and Xamarin forms as well. Uh, and we recently uh, launched support for Windows desktop and uh, support for UWP is uh, very, very close. And we have a very vibrant community uh, with over 19,000 stars on GitHub and uh, a lot of active developers uh, some of our customers are, uh, a lot of our customers are actually for Fortune 500 companies, and uh, we have a bunch of amazing applications in production used by uh, millions of people. And the question we get most often uh, is how does it differ from SQLite? Uh, SQLite is probably the most deployed database in the world. We're second most deployed, hopefully. <laughs> we'll get, take it over at some point. Uh, the key thing is uh, Realm was built from scratch and uh, designed to specifically to be very efficient on mobile. Uh, and we are not an ORM. Uh, that means there's no translation layer. Your objects are directly linked to your database, uh, which makes it uh, really fast and really uh, battery efficient. And uh, the memory footprint is much lower uh, because for example, if you have a traditional ORM and you fetch a million objects, you actually copy everything in your in memory uh, to have those mem uh, million objects available. With Realm objects, uh, they're very, very uh, simple shells uh, that just know how to communicate with the underlying database layer, uh, making it very efficient uh, to do huge queries and uh, get a bunch of objects. And with that being said, uh, let's see how you can use it and uh, how, how to get started with it. Uh, initially, you just declare your models as inheritors of RAM object and you add some properties. Uh, in build time, we'll inspect all those objects and replace the automatic properties uh, with code that will go into the database and set or get uh, the correct value. That that happens so absolutely transparently for you, so uh, you don't really have to care about it. It just happens. Uh, then once you have your object, uh, you can use Link you to query them and uh, enumerate them. Uh, you have to mutate data in transactions, uh, which makes Realm ACID compliant. Uh, that is, if a call uh, if your method trolls uh, in the middle of transaction, uh, nothing will be written on the database. And if the transaction completes, uh, then even if your device loses power uh, or something worse happens, uh, the data will be safely stored in the database. And relations are implemented just as normal iList properties. Uh, you add docs to your uh, to the docs property and uh, they're automatically linked to the person. Obviously, if you remove a doc from the database entirely, uh, all people, all person instances that have this doc in the docs collection uh, will have it removed. And uh, the coolest feature, I think, about Realm is that uh, objects are live and reactive. 
uh, and they always represent the current state of the database, uh, which eliminates the need to manually refresh uh, and fetch new data. For example, if we query uh, the database and get all docs uh, that are younger than two years, and do a count on that query. Uh, initially, it will, it will return zero, but as we add a new doc to the database, when we execute the same query uh, without recreating it, uh, without doing, again, round uh, we'll get one. And that is a very powerful concept uh, when you think about it uh, in the terms of data binding. Uh, being able to update your models in real time uh, allows you to just pass them to, to your UI and have the database actually drive the UI. Um, this work, uh, all Realm objects implement iNotify property changed and uh, collections implement iNotify collection changed, uh, which means that they work really nicely with, uh, with uh, Xamarin forms. And it also works uh, cross thread and cross processes. Uh, so, for example, if you bind your UI on the main thread to a, an instance of a RAM object, and then in the background thread you fetch uh, information from your server and uh, update another instance of the same object, your UI will be automatically updated. You don't have to synchronize or anything. Uh, just a second, sorry for that, but uh, go to webinar popped up. Uh, and another thing that people are usually concerned to, about is two-way data binding. So uh, not only getting notified of changes, but also persisting changes to the database. Uh, in most cases, the binding engine is not aware that you're talking to a database, so it doesn't know about transactions or anything. Uh, but We've been clever and implemented uh, the iReflectable type, which uh, Xamarin Forms respects, to provide custom setters and getters uh, for data binding purposes. And those will automatically create transactions uh, if a transaction is not, not already opened. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, keeping a transaction uh, dur for the duration of your uh, page. And when we mentioned threading, uh, there's somewhat of a limitation, uh, but actually a conscient decision on our part to uh, confine Realm objects to a single thread. Uh, that helps a lot with uh, race conditions and uh, eliminates uh, data corruption scenarios. So if you have an instance of an object on the main thread and you want to do something on the background thread with it, uh, you have to get a new instance of the same object uh, on the background thread. And with that, uh, you know like 95% of what there is to know about Realm. Uh, the API is extremely simple uh, and it's extremely easy to get started. Then uh, let's move on to the Realm mobile platform. Uh, once you have a mobile database, uh, the next logical step is to be able to send the data on the device to some server and also get some data from the server on the device. And that is where Realm Mobile Platform comes in. Uh, it's basically a set of services uh, that live on a hosted server somewhere uh, that allow your uh, the on-device databases to communicate with uh, that server. We have authentication system for uh, authenticating different users. We have access control mechanisms to share uh, realms between users, and we have the sync engine that's the heart of everything that actually uh, allows the database to communicate and automatically resolves conflicts as they occur. And the, pur the purpose of that is to eliminate a bunch of network challenges. So uh, when you think about it, uh, the last time when you, when you wrote when you wrote a mobile application that talks to a server for example, via REST API. Uh, you had to handle a bunch of scenarios where the server isn't available, then you had to synchronize data, and then uh, you had to resolve conflicts, uh, which makes it really annoying, and we wanted to do that instead of you. Uh, 
and it's very important to know that the whole database is on the device. Uh, so you don't, uh, when a user runs a query, uh, we don't have to go to the server and fetch the results. It's already there. And because the database is on the device, uh, writes apply immediately. Uh, there's no way a write can fail. And then in the background, this data is synchronized with the server uh, absolutely transparently for you. And uh, if you build your UI uh, around what's in the database, uh, then you don't have anything to do uh, in order to update it. Uh, it will automatically update with the same way uh, it updates with the on the device database. And getting the Realm mobile platform or getting your Realm synchronized is quite easy. Uh, you do you create a credentials instance. Uh, we support a bunch of authentication methods. So uh, we support obviously username, password, but also Facebook, uh, Google, Azure Active Directory authentication, and we also support custom authentication in the uh, enterprise and professional editions, uh, so you can integrate with your own authentication system. Uh, then, once you created the credentials, uh, you specify the URL of the RAM server, and you log in your user. Once you have your user, you create a sync configuration and pass it to the RAM get instance method. And that's the only configuration you need to enable uh, the RAM mobile platform and synchronizing RAMs with the server. Everything else is exactly the same as is, is the Realm Mobile database. And that's all of my slides. Uh, let's do first a quick demo of how to deploy uh, the Realm Mobile platform on Azure. Uh, right now, we expect the Realm Mobile platform, or the Realm Object Server, uh, to be deployed on your hosted uh, servers. They may be hosted in the cloud, uh, but they may be on premise as well. Right now, I created a, just an empty a Linux in instance. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu. And we'll see how to uh, enable uh, ROS to run on that. First, uh, ROS uses uh, port 9080, so we'll need to open that. Uh, and here we are. Let's create a new security rule. Call it. ROS. Uh, we also support encrypted communication uh, on port 9443, but uh, there, then you have to uh, supply your certificates and uh, it's more involved, but we do support it. While we are, uh, while the pro uh, network interface is provisioning, uh, let me install the Realm mobile platform on that uh, virtual machine. I'll just follow the the five steps we have on the website, and by the end, I'll have a working ROS instance. Uh, right now, the ROS works on uh, Linux and Mac, and uh, we hope that at some point we'll be able to provide a Windows version, uh, but it's not there yet. And now it's installing the RAM object server. So Nick, while this is doing this, I have, yeah. I have a question from the uh, chat window here. Um, yeah. Underlying this is a database. How is that stored? So we're not storing these objects in SQLite, right? Just no, we're not. Uh, it's so completely can you talk a uh, about how they're stored. Uh, they are stored as objects, so basically the, the same layout they have in memory is the layout they have on disk. Uh, so when you open a realm, it's memory mapped, so uh, the realm, uh, the core engine uh, knows which property goes uh, to which offset, and that's how uh, it fetches the, the correct uh, number of bytes to return it uh, to the binding. Okay, so they're not serialized to XML or JSON. They're actually stored no. as binary. Yes, they are. Excellent. Uh, and there's just two, two last commands that we have to run. And if I did everything correct, uh, this is the, the IP address. Uh, before it didn't open. 
and now we are presented with the dashboard. Uh, initially, I'll have to specify an admin user uh, that will be able to create users and uh, administer my server. Uh, and this is what the dashboard looks like. Uh, we have uh, a tab where we can see all the realms managed by this ROS instance. And we have a tab where we can see all users. Right now we have just one user, uh, that's the admin user. I'll create another one uh, because we, we want to collaborate with someone after all. Uh, and that's it. Uh, we have an instance and let's see how we can connect to that one. Uh, right. So I have a Xamarin, uh, Xamarin project. Uh, it's Xamarin Forms, and it's uh, quite bare bones. I've taken the liberty of adding a few things. Uh, so I've added Realm, the NuGet package, and I've added a view model base uh, that is very very basic, but is something that you would expect to have in every MVM project. Uh, it has it implements line notify property changed and, and has a few methods, a few helper methods to raise those property changed. And I have a message model, uh, which is going to be the synchronized message with uh, which all users will uh, communicate through. Uh, those have date, uh, sender, text, and a Boolean property is sent. And while we edit, uh, let me show how. Uh, things will look like uh, so we know what we're implementing. I deployed the final application on my device uh, and initially we'll have a login screen. After the user logs in, we'll be presented with a page where we can uh, create uh, or join a room. I'll create one because uh, there's no room created uh, on this empty ROS instance. And Every room will be uh, backed by a single realm. So once I call create, we can go back to uh, the dashboard and see that now we have a realm that's called rooms slash test. And this will be uh, synchronized between uh, all users. And then uh, I can start uh, sending messages, but there's nobody there. So uh, I will be very lonely. Let's see how I can implement this UI really uh, quickly by using Realm. So this is the message object. Uh, it has those properties. And then I'll have another object uh, that's called user details that will contain the username and the server URL of the ROS instance. And one thing that's probably uh, not really intuitive when you begin working with Realm is that uh, it's perfectly fine to have as many realms as you want. Uh, and some of them might be synchronized, some of them might be local. So in this case, I'll synchronize uh, my messages, but the user details will be local, uh, will be stored locally on uh, the device because I, I don't have any, uh, any need for them to be synchronized. And that's pretty much it. I have a few converters that will help me with coloring and uh, the most famous inverse Boolean converter, uh, but those are not particularly interesting. So uh, let's start by adding a login page. I so like one, one quick question here. Is this sample app that you're creating, is this going to be available that people can download this and, and check it out? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we can share our GitHub Great. URL. And, uh, they can check it out. Okay. Uh, let's create a login page. Uh, you'll notice that I'll be really lazy with uh, implementing the XAML because uh, I find it's very verbose. Uh, so I have a bunch of snippets, but the, the core here is very uh, clear. So for the login page, I have three entries, uh, the server URL, username, password, and a single button login. And those are bound to my uh, details, my password property, and the login command. And let's implement a login view model. Right. Uh, we said that we need a uh, user details property. 
and you also need a string. And we need a login command. All right. Uh, now, for the user details, uh, I only want to have a single instance there. Uh, so let me show how you can easily achieve that with Realm. Uh, I'll create a current user details. Uh, and it's basically just uh, following the stuff on the slides. Uh, first, I'll create a Realm configuration. Uh, and by default, uh, when you create, when you get an instance of Realm using realm.get instance, uh, the schema of that Realm uh, will contain all classes in your assembly uh, that inherit from Realm object. If you don't want that, like in my case, I, I in the user details realm, I only want the user details class, and in the messages realm, I only want the message class. So I can limit that by specifying a finite number of object classes. Then I'll, I'll do a realm.get instance. Then I'll get the current, just uh, all user details, first or default. And if it's no, I'll just add it and return it. With that, I can set it in my uh, login view model. Uh, and because RAM objects are observable, uh, this will automatically send property change to, to the UI whenever those change, uh, whenever any property in the details object changes. And let's implement the login flow. In order to have a few uh, uh, somewhat reactive UI, uh, I'm not going to throw spinners or anything, but just want to disable some buttons. I'll set the isVZ property to true. And then uh, let's create credentials. Username and password. Just a second. The go to meeting UI is again popping up. So username and password. Uh, I'll pass the details. Dot username that will be set by the uh, UI itself. And uh, then for the password, I'll pass the password. And then there's an option to create or get user. Uh, in this case, I'll assume that all users are created already. Uh, and then uh, after that, I'll just do a user, uh, user login async with the credentials. And then uh, I'll need to pass in an URL, which is details.server URL, port 9080. Uh, and of course, this needs to be an URI. Right. Uh, if that call succeeds, I'll have a user that I can uh, then log in, uh, create a realm with. Uh, and, uh, right, uh, that's, okay. Uh, in the app XAML, I'll navigate to the login view, uh, to the login page, and then when the user has logged in, I want to present a new page, that's the room page. So I'll create a action on user logged in uh, that I'll call, I'll invoke whenever the login succeeds. Obviously, uh, and that needs to be awaited. Obviously, uh, you need to, in, in a real application, you probably want to have, have better error handling, but uh, it will suffice for this demo. So in the main page, uh, this needs to go away. I'll navigate uh, to the to my login page, pass in my login view model. And in the login page constructor, I'll set it as a binding context. So 
any of my bundles this will work. I'm going back to the AppXAML. I want to supply the, the action that will be the will be called when uh, the login succeeds. Uh, since that may happen on a background thread, uh, I will invoke on my thread as I'm going to replace the main page. And I'll create a new rooms page. And I'll okay, let's leave it at like at that and create the rooms page. And the rooms page will obviously need a rooms view model that we will assign as a binding context. For the UI of the rooms page, uh, we'll have an entry. Uh, let me actually show it to you. We'll have an entry and two but buttons are uh, join and create. And those are just bound to, uh, bound to properties of the view model. Uh, let's create the view model then. And that view model will need a user uh, to create uh, the synchronized realm with. And let's store that user. And let's go back to the AppZamo uh, to fix the compiler errors. Model. All right, uh, now whenever uh, the user logs in, we'll just go to the uh, rooms view model. And for the rooms view model, uh, we need the name property that we're going to bind, to bind our UI to, and the two commands. Create and join. Let's implement first join. All right, to, to join the realm, uh, I need its URL. So the URL is going to be realm. Uh, we use the realm protocol for synchronized realms. Uh, then the server URL, uh, port 9080, rooms, and slash the name of the room. Uh, then I'll need to create a, uh, to get uh, the messages round. So I'll get a, I'll create a helper method that will return a round. Uh, I'm taking a URL. And here, uh, I just need to supply a uh, sync configuration. Sync configuration that accepts a user, which I have saved, and a URI that's from the URL. And to, similarly to what we did with uh, the user details configuration, I want to limit the object classes to just the uh, message class. And that's that's everything I need to, to open a synchro a synchronized realm. So I'll just pass it to a realm.get instance. And then I can obtain that messages realm from the URL. And finally I need to navigate to the messages page. And again I, I'll create a helper method and get to messages. And that needs a realm. I'll implement that in just a second. So that's my uh, join method. Uh, it's very simplistic and it assumes that the user joining the realm knows its exact name. Obviously in a real world scenarios, you probably want another shared, shared realm that contains all chat rooms that have been created. 
and the user can pick from one of those. Uh, but for the simplistic demo, this might do. And I need another method for the create room. And that will be a little bit more involved. Uh, so this will be asynchronous as we're going to actually con connect to the server uh, to create the room. Yeah, I said it's busy to true. And it's actually going to be very similar to what we have for join. So we're going to need the URL, we're going to create the realm, and we're going to navigate to it. But here, before we navigate to it, we need to grant access to other users to actually write to the room. By default, uh, realms are, read, uh, are restricted to the user who has created them, uh, and we can grant access uh, using the permissions API. Let's see how that works. The access to a URL. All right, uh, we support two flows uh, for granting access. One is uh, the absolute one uh, called permission change, where you basically set the permissions for a URL uh, and for a set of users. It's very similar to uh, chmod in uh, Unix systems. The other one is more uh, flexible, where you create a permission offer, uh, generate a sharing token, then send that token using uh, any means you like, for example, in an email or a iMessage, then uh, the recipient of that token uh, can use it to get the euro and get the permissions for the realm that uh, this token is for. Uh, we use the absolute one right now. Uh, any permissions changes are performed by adding objects to the management row. So let me get the user, the user's management row. Uh, user dot get management row. What's really interesting is that uh, the permission system here uh, is implemented using realms itself. So what we do is we add an object to the management row that gets synchronized to the server. Then the server processes the object and updates some of its properties. And those changes get synchronized back to the client and then uh, we know that the object has been processed and the permissions have been granted. Uh, to grant permissions, we'll create a permissions change, uh, a permission change object. And it has two parameters, uh, the user ID and the realm URL. I'll supply star, meaning that every user can connect and can read and write from that realm. And I'll supply the permissions. So may read is true, may write is true, but may manage is false. So we don't want to grant manage permissions for that realm. Then, using the property uh, notification mechanisms, I'll subscribe for property changed. And if the, prop if the change property name is status, that means that the server has processed uh, the message and uh, we know that uh, the, the change uh, has been affected. Uh, since I'm a big fan of the async await, await pattern, I, I'm going to wrap that event in a task completion source. Task completion source. Okay. And whenever the, pro uh, the property has changed, it will just set the result. All right, now all, is all that's left is to add that change to the management realm uh, in a write transaction. And then we await the task completion source task. All right, uh, now that the server has processed the message, uh, the change request, it can either be successful or uh, failed. So let's check if the, if the status is successful. Or rather, let's check if it's an error and throw an exception in that case. Uh, change dot status message. Uh, and what's really cool here is that we didn't need to refetch the change from the database. 
because it will be automatically updated uh, whenever the task completes, uh, the status will be already the new value. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, and with that method, we just grant access for that URL, and our rooms view model looks pretty complete. We have create and joined methods, and what is left is creating a messages page. Yes, page. And let's see what its layout will look like. Ah, oh, come on. So it's a little bit more involved, but that's mostly because uh, we have a list view here. Uh, basically, we have an entry uh, for creating the new message, and we have a button for sending the message. And we have uh, a list view containing all messages that are data bound to uh, a single message object, uh, its sender date and text. And with that being said, let's implement the view model, which is the interesting part. So uh, it will need a realm uh, that is the actual synchronized realm that uh, contains the messages. And uh, we'll pass in a name uh, in order to make the page look a little bit better. Uh, so we'll create a title property that will assign to room plus name. Uh, right. The messages page, let's bind to that property here. Control plus title. Let's go back to the view model. All right, we need to save that realm. Uh, and fetch some messages from it. What we're going to do uh, is create a property uh, that contains all messages that are to be displayed. It's going to be a collection uh, message messages. And because uh, realm collections automatically implement uh, I notify collection changed, the UI will be update, updated whenever a new message is uh, added to that collection. Uh, let's fetch it. Round.all message. And then uh, let's filter that collection a little bit. Uh, what's interesting uh, about your apps is that uh, they're all about ephemeral messaging. And that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, so that is what the is sent property content, uh, actually controls. Uh, what we want here is uh, we want to see other people's messages as they are typing it, uh, similarly to how a conversation works. Uh, you can't actually delete or edit uh, words that you have said. Uh, so we want to have messages that are sent. And if a message is not sent, it, it is being typed. Uh, we want to have it as long as the sender is not me. Uh, I don't want to see my messages twice, once in the edit box and one, once in the entry and once in the list view. Uh, let's get the current username. Uh, string, current username, and that's user ID. Yeah. And Nick, when you do that filtering there with the link, is that being done on the client side or on the server side? Uh, everything is on the client side. Uh, so the, the databases are synchronized between the server and the client, but both have a complete instance of the database. So uh, with link here, uh, we're filtering the client side database, but whenever the server sends some changes to the client, uh, the the collection, the messages collection, uh, will be notified of those changes and the UI will be updated. Does that make sense? Absolutely, thanks. Okay, and uh, I also don't want to display any empty messages, so I'll just uh, remove 
the messages. And then finally, I want to order them by descent length or uh, by their date. So as you can see, uh, RAM has full support of a uh, very powerful link queue. Uh, uh, very, has very powerful link queue support. Uh, obviously, there are some things missing, but uh, for 99% of the use cases, uh, it will work for you. Uh, and this query uh, will automatically be kept up to date, uh, updating the UI. And that's our messages. And obviously, we need a current message that we are editing. So when we create the, uh, the view model, uh, we'll check if there is a message uh, that is not sent, not and is sent, and whose author is me. So uh, if there is such message, I can continue from where I left off. So quick question, on that first filtering there, should that be where the sender is not the current username? Oh yeah, uh, that's, thank you. Uh, so uh, this will be my current message. And if it's no, I'll just uh, create it. Current message is no. Uh, algorithm, not right. Ground message is round of that. New message where the sender is the current user and the date is now. Okay, uh, that looks all right. Uh, the only thing that's left to implement is the actual command for sending messages. And send command. And let's implement that. It's going to be really simple. And the cool thing is uh, because we are writing to our local database. We don't care about uh, connectivity, and we don't expect that there will be failures uh, when saving a message. And whenever the server becomes online again, or uh, the client becomes online again, uh, those things will be uh, automatically synchronized, and uh, any conflicts will be resolved. So what I'll do is round out right, and the current message, I'll say that it's already sent, and I'll update its date to now. Then I'll create a new current message in the exact same way I created it in the constructor. Uh, that looks pretty much done to me. Uh, let's see if I have forgotten something. Let's build and see if we'll be able to synchronize things between the devices. Uh, this left device here is my iPhone, uh, my physical device. And the right device here is the simulator. Oh, all right. Uh, one thing I forgot is actually uh, displaying the messages uh, page. To do that, I'm going to need a navigation page that I'll pass the rooms page to. And then in the rooms page, uh, I'll need to pass the navigation to the view model so that the view model can navigate. Uh, obviously, uh, that's not something that uh, you should do in uh, MVM scenarios. Uh, as I'm going to have a reference to a page inside the view model, but it's not that big of a deal uh, for a demo. And here, the, the not implemented method we left, uh, navigate to messages, uh, we'll navigate to the messages page. Messages view model, we'll pass in the realm and name, and then we'll call navigation uh, push new messages. 
page. I can see the view model. Um, why is it not happy? Yes, because it doesn't accept our just view model. All right. Uh, now we are supposed to see that. After logging in, we actually see the navigation page. All right, things look quite similarly. Let's join the test room. And on the simulator, I see the test message from uh, the user A, which is my iPhone device. And if I start typing a new message, uh, it immediately pops up in the simulator uh, because changes are immediately synchronized from the device to the server and back to the simulator. Uh, if I start, start typing on the simulator, the device also automatically uh, synchronizes changes and I see a new message being typed from uh, user B. Then if I press send, uh, I'll see it on the simulator as well because uh, it will clean up the, uh, it, it will mark it as sent. And the one thing we forgot here is uh, calling notify property changed in the messages view model. Uh, to actually, uh, as, you, as you see, uh, the UI wasn't updated at all with the empty message because uh, the details wasn't raised. Uh, not the details, the current message. And now, if I have not missed something else, uh, it should be fine. Okay, so uh, now the entry is updated uh, properly. And if we go back, uh, with my admin user, which is A, I'll create another realm. Uh, room. And I can immediately join that with my B user. And I type in there. And that's pretty much for the demo. Uh, we can move forward with the slides uh, and then I'll take questions. Uh, so just a few quick tips when using Realm uh, is use multiple realms in an app. Uh, that seems to be not obvious, uh, but it's very powerful when you uh, realize you can do that. Uh, make the most of data binding support. Uh, it's really powerful and it will help you synchronize your UI with your database uh, without having to do any manual work. And when sharing realms, uh, back the smallest shareable unit with a single realm. For example, with a messaging app, that would be a single thread. If you're doing a Google Docs clone, uh, that would probably be a single document. Uh, so think of the smallest shareable unit and have, have it backed by a single realm. And with that, uh, I'm all up for questions. Awesome, great, Nick, thank you. So yeah, we have a lot of questions actually. I didn't want to interrupt you there because some of the questions are more uh, complicated. I want to let you get through kind of the introduction to what Realm is before we kind of dive into the details here. But um, like I said, we have a lot of questions, so I'm just going to kind of run through them if you want to go through them uh, fairly quickly. All right. So first okay. question, first question is how is conflict resolution handled? So that's a that's a great question if you have. Uh, one person making a change and then another person making a change on a different device to the same object. How do you handle that? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's a very, very good question. Uh, it actually uh, doesn't affect only uh, people making devices at the same time on different device or making changes on different devices at the same time. It also affects, uh, for example, if I'm offline for a few hours, I create stuff and then uh, at the same time somebody else uh, deleted things I was working on. Uh, so conflict resolution uh, always comes up uh, when talking about uh, synchronizing uh, and offline first. And uh, we're using uh, operational transform uh, to 
apply a set of uh, transformations uh, on the server side realm and on the client side realm. So at the end, they get to the same state. Uh, and we have a bunch of rules uh, handling all kinds of scenarios. And we have a bunch of tests covering uh, all those rules. Uh, so basically, we are confident that conflict resolution uh, works absolutely automatically uh, without any user interaction and produces the correct results. Uh, obviously, there, there are, that's a very broad topic. Uh, and I think we had an article out there exactly on how operational transform world, uh, works at Realm. So uh, if, you, uh, if, if the user asking that uh, would go and search for it, uh, it's explained in much more detail than I can. Great, yeah. So uh, just kind of give us the, the basics of it, which is great. Um, so another question, is it possible for the event framework to tie into JMS message queues? Not sure if you know that one. Can you tie uh, into other? Yeah, uh, I'm not familiar with JMS message queues. Uh, the event framework uh, that we use on the server is Node. Uh, so uh, it, it's written in Node. So uh, you basically need to use JavaScript to handle any events uh, that happen on the server. Uh, for now, uh, we do plan to uh, add support for other languages, uh, most notably uh, .NET, hopefully. Uh, but right now, uh, if it can be done with Node, then yes, it can. Uh, if it cannot, uh, then you have to figure out some workaround where a Node process probably uh, communicates with a different process which communicates with uh, the JVM message queues. Yeah, the same thing with uh, like so just MSMQ. Anything, anything that you're tying into the event framework, if I hear you correctly, you're going to have to write the code using Node.js, using JavaScript, and anything that Node.js yes. can do you can do there. You just have to wire it up yourself. Yes. Great. Okay. Um, can you partition the synchronization so that the client only has a portion of the server's database, or is it always going to download the whole database? Uh, right now, you cannot. Uh, so, yeah, it will download the whole database, uh, but that's one of the top requested features, and we are actively working on it and hope to deliver it uh, in the near future. Uh, but yeah, the answer for now is no, but it will be available uh, soon. Great. So that means that uh, your database size is basically limited to the amount of disk space on your mobile device. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, just to follow up uh, on that, uh, while this is true, uh, you probably don't want to synchronize your entire database. Uh, we have uh, for the Enterprise Edition, uh, we have uh, data connectors, uh, for example, with PostgreSQL. So if you have a database, uh, like a huge database backed by Postgres, uh, that can uh, automatically communicate with uh, a bunch of small realms. Uh, so that will be the partitioning itself. Uh, you partition your huge amount of data into smaller uh, units that can be synchronized to the device. Uh, and this is where uh, using multiple realms uh, is very powerful, uh, where you, ha you have a huge database with uh, millions of records, but each user probably needs to access uh, a small portion of that. Uh, you write that small portion to a realm, and those, th this realm is synchronized with the device. Okay, and, but that's for enterprise edition only, is that correct? Uh, the, the data collector is for enterprise edition. Uh, the partitioning, uh, since it hasn't launched yet, uh, we haven't decided which editions will uh, probably will have access to the data partitioning. All right. Um, how about next question? What technology are you using to transfer the, the objects from the client to the server? So is that just WebSockets uh, or what's going on there? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's WebSockets uh, over SSL. So. Great. Uh, how about a quick question? Do you have a Docker image? Uh, for the, I assume for the server side. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I actually I'm not uh, using Docker a lot, so uh, I'm not sure if we have one. Uh, but if it's not on the website, uh, we probably don't. And if you need it, uh, just open a question, uh, open a feature request on the Realm Mobile Platform uh, GitHub. Uh, okay. 
we go until we want it. All right, so the next question is, can you view the data by copying the file offline? Or I guess another good way of saying that is there is there any kind of client-side viewer application or anything like that? You know, how can you look at this data client-side? Uh, yes, actually, uh, I didn't demo that because uh, it's uh, going to be uh, very... Uh, it, it, I thought it's uh, going to be too much of our time, but uh, we have a, a Realm browser uh, for Mac right now uh, that can open uh, both uh, synchronized realms and uh, local realms uh, and inspect uh, their contents. Okay. Uh, and Doesn't it's available on the App Store, uh, so you can just download it and uh, open Realm URL uh, and it's exactly the same as uh, opening uh, your uh, realms on the .NET binding. Okay, so but if you're running your application on, oh, so it's actually it's connecting to the server then. It's not collect, connecting yes. to the client. Okay, so connecting it's, your it's server. It's connecting to the server. Yes. Okay. Uh, and if you want to open a local file, uh, you can open it uh, by copying it on the Mac. Great. Um. Let's see. Oh, just froze for a second. How about client side? Is the data encrypted? Uh, it can be uh, if you supply a uh, encryption key. So uh, let me just show that real quickly. Uh, for example, in the user details, uh, I have a property called encryption key. If you supply a 64 byte array, uh, it will be encrypted with that key. Okay. Excellent. Uh, can you lock down the new user creation? You know, if you're in a big company or you just don't want people to be able to create new users? Right. Uh, you can. Uh, however, that's limited for the professional and enterprise editions where you have the event framework uh, that can actually handle whenever a new user is created, uh, it can uh, discard that uh, event. Uh, for the developer edition, you cannot currently, uh, but it makes sense to me. So uh, if, if you open an issue or on GitHub, I uh, will probably handle that. All right. How about uh, a related question here is, is it possible to automate the user creation? So you, can you script that or anything like that? Uh, do you have to create a new user using the app? Or is there another way to do that? There is a, a Node SDK. Uh, so you can actually uh, you, you you can do it uh, similarly to the .NET uh, way, uh, just using Node, which can run on uh, on your Mac or, or on the server, and uh, that can create users. Uh, so if you feed a JSON object to the Node SDK and it starts creating users, uh, it's somewhat automatic. Uh, in the enterprise edition uh, where you have the data connectors API, uh, you can actually uh, copy all your users from your existing database uh, to the Realm uh, mobile platform, uh, but I'm not sure if there's an alternative to that for the development edition uh, except for doing it manually with the Node SDK. Fantastic. Uh, is FODI required for your Realm objects? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, we we have a dependency for the uh, in the NuGet. It is actually what uh, over uh, with what uh, rewrites the IL mm -hmm. to replace the properties of the, uh, your existing objects. Great. Yeah, I love Fodi. Fodi is great. Um, how can you tell the difference between local and synced data? Is there any way, or is it just assumed that it's always synced? You know, what if you're offline? For example, um, that's yeah, that that's a tough question. Uh, by default, you cannot uh, you cannot tell the difference between uh, local and sync data. So uh, it's data in your database. How it got there uh, is not immediately uh, obvious to the developer. Uh, and we have done done that uh, deliberately because uh, we thought that uh, that's going to be the 99% case. If you really, if you're really interested if uh, data is synced or not, uh, you can probably do something uh, like with the, the professional uh, enterprise editions where you have uh, 
the event framework. Uh, you can uh, add a property uh, saying synchronized, for example, uh, a Boolean property uh, that is, is synchronized, and set that on the server whenever the, the object is processed. Okay, so if you added one then locally, it wouldn't it would be set to false until you synchronize yes. it. Good. Yes, and, and the server will set it to true whenever it receives uh, the change notification. All right. Um, back to authentication. Does this cache your login credentials? How's the login handled? Uh, all right. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it saves uh, in uh, in an encrypted realm. Uh, it saves some metadata. Uh, right now, I haven't used that, but we have a pro property on the user object. Uh, so, for example, in the login view model, I can actually uh, do a, if user dot current is not known, I can actually uh, immediately pass it to the on user login, uh, and user current and user o are all logged in are properties on the user object uh, that actually get uh, re read from that uh, metadata realm uh, and see if uh, there's a persistent, a persistent instance of, uh, of the current user or uh, if you log multiple users in uh, of, all the of the all the logged in users. So uh, you can, yes, by default, it's saved. You can turn it off uh, if you don't want to uh, save it. And you can use it uh, to avoid having to prompt users for credentials each time. Okay, and that's encrypted and safe on the on the client. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, question: What is the snippet selector that you're using? I didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one. Yes, I guess. Uh, that's this, it. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is an application uh, from the Mac App Store. It's called Paste. Uh, it's it's actually a clipboard manager, uh, but you can pin uh, stuff on the that are basically snippets uh, in different uh, pin boards. So paste, is that what you called? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Can we disable the auto synchronization feature in Realm and do a batch update instead? Uh, right now, you cannot. Uh, but that's also a request feature. Uh, for example, in scenarios where uh, uh, the battery is low, or uh, we know that uh, there will not be uh, Wi-Fi, or uh, three, uh, for example, uh, if you want to sync only on Wi-Fi, uh, don't want to waste uh, people's data. Uh, so these are scenarios that uh, we don't cover right now. Uh, but it's highly requested feature, and we have it in the backlog. Hope to address it. Uh, have just a few simple methods, so for example, pause and uh, resume. That will handle that. Okay, so that that also uh, goes into another question we had: is you know, if you're on a, a cellular connection, there's well, currently there's no way to limit how often you synchronize, correct? Yes. Okay, but hopefully you're working on that, and at some point. Yes. Uh, the thing is, uh, in most cases, uh, synchronizations are very efficient. Uh, we only send changes on the back and forth. Uh, we don't send uh, the whole round. Uh, so unless you want to do uh, like a batch update on the server that has to be sent to each client, uh, changes will be very small and uh, don't, we will not waste uh, too much data. But obviously, uh, it's a good thing to, to be able to pause and resume uh, synchronization on demand. Yes, and especially certain parts of the world and certain, you know, carrier yeah. plans could get expensive. Um, yes. Can you filter by a property on the Realm object? And I think we saw that using the link, right? Uh, yes. Messages you model here. Yeah, uh, I filter cool. by is sent. Uh, I can create complex uh, filters using or sentence. All right. Um, does this support JWT or bearer token authentication? Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, uh, I know that uh, the Azure Active Directory tokens are JWT, uh, and we support that. Uh, if you are not using one of the uh, 
providers we have built in. Uh, you can also do a custom authentication. Uh, so plug in your own JavaScript code that uh, will decrypt and uh, validate the JW token, JWT token, and uh, then uh, tell us that uh, yes, this is a valid token, and uh, you can log the user in. Uh, so with the custom authentication, you definitely can, uh, but Gutin we only support Azure. Okay, and that's also just for the enterprise edition, or is that the developer edition? Uh, all, all editions have full authentication mechanisms right now. Uh, I'm not sure if that will change as we have more authentication providers, but uh, right now uh, we don't limit that by edition. Okay. Uh, so for mobile, obviously it's important that we support background. Can we perform the rights to the Realm database in the background on a background task uh, or the synchronization on a background task so that if the user switches apps, it'll continue to work? Uh, that's, yeah, that, that's uh, probably not, not a background task, but rather, uh, yeah, I, I get what, what you mean. Uh, it should work. Uh, obviously, on Android, it's much easier because uh, you have uh, you are they are more much more liberal with uh, backgrounding there. Mm -hmm. uh, on iOS, uh, I'm not super familiar with the API for uh, background work, uh, but theoretically, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I I know that uh, there are certain callbacks that get involved, uh, and you can definitely open the realm in the callback, uh, synchronize, and then uh, close the realm. Uh, so uh, theoretically, it should work. Uh, I'm not sure how easy it is to implement on iOS, but uh, it's not about Realm. It's more about uh, backgrounding on iOS. Yes. All right. So uh, where's the actual database um, stored? Is it in isolated storage? Is it in, I assume it's not in memory. It is getting persisted, right? So uh, is it in... Each application, each platform has its own location for isolated storage, I assume. Is that where you're storing this? Uh, yes. Uh, right now, uh, y you can override that. Uh, so by default, it's stored uh, in isolated storage in all applications. Uh, we use uh, environment special folder personal uh, that I think maps to the documents folder on iOS and uh, the isolate, isolated storage on uh, Android. Uh, but y you can override that uh, if you want, uh, for example, to, sh to store that on the uh, memory card on Android. Good. And then, uh, kind of related to that, what happens if the database size reaches the maximum storage of the client device? I assume, do we just crash? Uh, well, you, st you start uh, getting exceptions uh, out of memory, uh, not out of memory, but uh, file size exceeds exception, something like that. Uh, if you don't handle that, uh, it will crash. If you handle that, right. uh, you can show a prompt and tell the user to clean up data or uh, clean up all data. All right. And I don't know if you know this or can share the roadmap, but do you know the uh, estimated time for custom authentication? Uh, I think we have custom authentication right now. Uh, it's not as easy to do as we want to. Uh, basically, you have to drop uh, a JavaScript file uh, in the folder where uh, the ROS is. Uh, but we do support it. Uh, we plan to, to make it even easier, and uh, we plan to, to add uh, much more uh, authentication providers in the near future. Uh, but yeah, custom authentication is supported right now, albeit uh, a little bit more involved. Okay, and another roadmap question is not being able to disable the synchronization or throttle the, the synchronization if you're on a cellular connection is, is very important. Do you know when that would be available? Uh, no, <laughs> sorry. No. Uh, but uh, I think we have an issue on GitHub. Uh, if you find it and uh, vote for it, uh, it will be definitely bumped. Uh, I believe uh, it's in our uh, like near roadmap, uh, but I don't think we have started working on that yet. So uh, can't give a definitive date, but uh, it's definitely going to be before the end of the year. Okay. 
how about uh, some performance questions here? So on the initial Realm Git instance, the initialization, does it download yeah. the entire copy of the database all at once? And if the data set's large and has maybe images, binary data, how does it ensure that the data is uncorrupted? And then a second question to follow up on that is, does the synchronization use compression as it syncs the objects back and forth? Uh, yes, I, I believe uh, objects are compressed. Uh, and as for uh, how it validates uh, that all data is uh, downloaded, uh, it downloads data uh, change set by change set. So uh, every time you commit a transaction, that's a new change set. And uh, those will get downloaded uh, one by one. And uh, when a change set is applied, it's pretty much the same as committing a transaction. So uh, that means that once a change set is applied, uh, we are very certain that the uh, data is correct and uh, valid. Uh, when the data is very large, though, uh, we have provided a mechanism to observe uh, for progress and, uh, uh, and display that to the user. Uh, on the, where did I get my, where's my RAM? Uh, so in the get messages RAM here, for example, uh, in the rooms view model, I can do RAM session, get session, and then uh, get progress observable. And this is observable, sync progress, uh, and you can use that to be notified of uh, as the download progresses and display something to the user. Uh, but once the, a change set is applied, it will definitely be valid and uh, your database will not be corrupted. And also uh, the get instance uh, doesn't block. So uh, you get an instance and uh, it downloads stuff on the, in the background. So you can immediately start writing to it uh, without worrying that uh, it might take uh, a few minutes to download. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'll get to that one. Is there an x86 version coming? Uh, there is one. Uh, there, there is uh, x86 for what? Uh, I imagine uh, for .NET. Uh, if that is the case, uh, we have uh, the Realm Mobile Database. Uh, it supports Windows Desktop. Uh, so you can run it uh, on your home computer. You can run it on the server. Uh, but it doesn't support syncing yet. Uh, so you can't sync a Windows Realm uh, to the Realm object server. Uh, but that's in progress, and we hope to deliver it uh, rather soon. Uh, it, I imagine uh, that's the question is for .NET languages. Uh, we also support it with JavaScript. Uh, and I think that's the, the language we support. Okay, and this one was actually for x86 for the offline viewer app. Uh, I, I assume... So the, Steven, the browser app? Yeah, Steven, did you mean Windows support or just x86 CPU on a Mac? You might mean Windows. Yeah, Windows support. So Windows Windows for the offline uh, browser. Uh, for, yeah, for, for the browser, uh, we plan to, to make it cross-platform uh, eventually. Uh, so once that lands, uh, it will support a uh, all major uh, operating systems, uh, including Windows. Okay. Any idea on when that might be? Uh, <laughs> no. no. We are working on it. It's uh, high on our to-do list, but uh, it's not. Uh, we we don't have a definitive date for that yet. Okay. It's hard, you know, sharing roadmap dates publicly as well. So I understand. Um. So if it's encrypted, do you know which encryption protocol it's using? Uh, uh, for, this could either be for the storing the user credentials or just as you're transmitting data as well. Uh, I'm not sure which uh, protocol it uses. I know that um, it uses OpenSSL to, uh, op uh, to write and read uh, the encrypted files. Uh, but I'm not sure exa uh, exactly which protocol it uses. So, uh, but uh, feel free to ask that on the uh, Realm Mobile Platform repo, and uh, we'll answer that. Uh, so somebody with more knowledge will answer that. Okay, and it, it might be on your documentation somewhere. We could go check. Um, so for the, we were talking earlier about WebSockets. Is it 
Yes. True web sockets or is it simulated web web sockets? Uh, that's uh, I'm not sure what uh, simulated web sockets are. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the technology. Uh, so yeah, that's outside of my competency. Okay. Oh, oh, and uh, we, Stephen actually found the answer for the encryption. It's um, on your website. It says uh, SSL in flight, AES 256 at rest. So there we go. So AES encryption. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Stephen again uh, clarified the the WebSockets one. So we're talking um, like long polling HTTP, kind of like a signal R might do. How it has fallbacks to other technologies to simulate WebSockets, or is it always true WebSockets? Uh, it's uh, as far as I know, it's always true WebSockets. Uh, we don't have fallbacks like signal R does. Okay. Uh, so we had a question uh, to link the GitHub repo. I put that in the chat window if anybody hasn't seen it. So just github.com slash realm. Pretty easy to remember. Uh, and the, that, that's the, the parent organization. And then uh, there's a bunch of repos. Uh, for example, realm.net is the right. one. And uh, the realm mobile platform is uh, the mobile platform. Uh, it, it's not open source, uh, but we have a repo where people can open issues and uh, ask for uh, boot fixes or uh, features. Okay. And do you know if you're behind a firewall, what ports you need to have open for the transmission, especially when it's using WebSockets and things? Uh, I, I think just 9080 uh, or 9, 9443. Uh, as far as I know, uh, you don't have to have any uh, to open any other port, ports in that. Excellent. So here is a, I'll put this in the chat window as well for anybody that's interested. There's a doc on the website for verifying port access. So, so that should uh, hopefully, I haven't read the whole thing, but I think it's going to be in there. Uh, does Realm support geo databases? If you're doing uh, geo lookups and things like that. Uh, no, right now. Uh, but we have uh, a feature request for that. Uh, so uh, we are going to support it uh, like uh, eventually. Uh, but for now, you probably have to manually calculate uh, intersections and uh, distances. OK. And again, can you tell us a little bit more about data connectors and while you do that, I'll see if you got some documentation on that as well. Um, I, I'm not familiar uh, too much with the feature, so uh, I'm not sure if there's any documentation about it uh, or how much documentation is there about it. Uh, but data connectors basically allow you to plug your own database uh, with Realm uh, and have a two-way synchronization between the database and the Realm files. And uh, it also offers uh, a set of API to control uh, how exactly that synchronization is ha happening, what is mapped to what, uh, which realm files are written, uh, which realm files are write to which uh, tables, and so on. Uh, right now, I think we are supporting uh, SQL databases, um, but uh, I imagine that uh, if there's enough interest, uh, we might uh, support uh, any any database uh, out there. Good. Yeah, I don't see any documentation on the site there yet. So maybe another place to ask a question. Um, I mean, uh, that's an uh, enterprise feature. So uh, if some if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to reach out to the sales team, uh, sales at ram.io, and they'll definitely uh, have much more information to share. Great. All right, so we have one more question. Nick, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you ask the Gosagan Adams, that must be 42. Uh, <laughs> exactly. But, As a good geek should know. All right, so I think that's, right. uh, that's all of our questions there. So thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it. For everybody else, uh, we are recording this session. This will be up on 
our Xamarin University website in the next couple days after we get some time to uh, encode it and render it. And uh, we'll try to get the links to the sample application and the materials as well. So, Nick, thank you so much for your help and for uh, teaching us even more about Realm. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, and thanks to everyone uh, for attending that. Thank <music> you.